What's up, folks? This is Tony Brewer. You're listening to or watching, as the case may be, Cogitations. Cogitations is the podcast where we think about things, we contemplate them, we turn them over in our minds, and then we discuss them. Daniel chapter 7, verse 28, Daniel writes, Hitherto is the end of the matter. I hope y'all can hear me, but hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me. My countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. We're not going to keep the matter in our hearts. We're going to talk about it. Today, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare, the whole armor of God. We are embroiled in a spiritual warfare. And I was listening to a lecture with Kyle Butt. That, no, I was listening to a lecture of Kyle Butts not with him, and he made this wonderful illustration when it come to uh, walk circumspectly, and he painted a picture of two armies, and one army did not know of the other's presence, and they are about to be arrayed in battle against one another because of their proximity. In that scenario, if you were a betting man, what would you bet would be the outcome? In other words, who's going to win that battle when those two armies, one who knows of the other's existence and one who is ignorant of the other's existence, whenever they finally do clash, what's going to be the outcome of that battle? If you're a betting man, every time you bet on the, on the army that knows it's in a war or knows that it's about to fight, we call this an ambush. An, a, a, a battalion that is ambushed is in a great disadvantage to a, a battalion that ambushes. An ambush is not nearly so effective if the person being ambushed knows the ambush is happening. And I put forth to you, it's not an ambush. I could be wrong about that. I could be convinced that, that, the word still applies, even if the party being ambushed knows they're being ambushed. But yeah, we got to walk circumspectly. If we don't understand and know that we are in a spiritual warfare, that supernatural forces are at work in the supernatural realm, affecting the, meta, the, the physical realm, then we're not going to get through this world alive in Christ. We're not going to be found faithful in the end. We're going to succumb to the wiles of Satan. And believe you me, Satan is working. Evangelist Edwin, thank you so much. Scott Beck, sound is good. Uh, good morning all. Yes, so I, I have a, a rather circuitous audio chain in order to get sound to the restream and... Yeah, I'm not going to say it all, but basically, I record a clean signal in my Mac book, but I also have a quarter-inch line running across over here to an audio interface to an entirely different computer that runs the live streaming because it's powerful, and if you're not familiar with that word, it's an English word spelled P-O-W-E-R-F-U-L, powerful. But we say if you really want to down south, but it is powerful, powerful. But I don't understand. There are, there are some knobs that should affect volume that do not affect volume. It's almost like it's a ghost. It's not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do but you still have sound. I'm still recording. It's like, I don't even question it. Well, I mean, I do question it a lot, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm not going to, I'm just going to make sure I got the buttons set where they're supposed to. If you got sound, I'm happy. I'm a little bit unnerved because it's like, it's kind of like videos on the internet of whenever people have uh, fish that are, their heads are chopped off and they're gutted. And then the fish start flopping around. It kind of scares them. That's kind of the way I feel about this. Like, it's not, I don't understand what's going on here, but it's working. So we're going to leave it be and not touch it. 
one of these days it's probably just going to stop working and I'm not going to go know why I'm going to get mad and, and, and all that good stuff. But as of right now, it's still working. All right. Way more information than y'all needed. Hope I didn't lose any of you. Uh, sweet is watching. Good. Thank you. Toposh. Terry Crooks. Good morning to you. <laughs> Ooh, Terry. Oh, uh, I'm glad I, I'm glad I got you unblocked from Facebook. <laughs> That was a dumb move. Oh, I, that that troll come in, and I tried to uh, block and delete that troll's comment. About that time, the the chat shifted, and you were caught in stray. But you you were caught by stray friendly fire. And Scott Beck, yes, there's par in the blood. That's it. I love that little meme. Say it to me again. There's par in the blood. All right, folks. I got some exciting news. Um, Aaron Dotson and I Tuesday. Nope. That's, that's not true. Aaron Dotson is not going to be with us Tuesday. Um, he's, he's going to be traveling and he needs to, I don't want to give any of his personal information, but it's actually a good thing. And, uh, he's, he's going to be traveling. He's just not going to be able to be with us. Um, so I was going to do a hard launch uh, of the, of the, of the Shopify store on Tuesday with Aaron but I'm just going to do soft launches. I'm going to go through the store today a little bit before we get into our podcast, and um, hopefully you'll like it. Um, we we've got I'm, I'm partnered with a person that's helping me with this, and uh, she's doing a really good job. And uh, we got we got more ideas for products coming out. Um, I want to make a shirt. I want to make a shirt or a cap or something like that. It says cool beans on it. Um. I wouldn't mind uh, trying to make a good design, a catchy design, like we'll catch you on the flip side. It'll always say that. And uh, maybe hitherto is the end of the matter. I don't know, just something I, we, you know, catch phrases we always say. Jason Goldtrap, good afternoon to you. It's good to see you. Um, but catch phrases that, uh, that we say around here, um, that, that's, that's, that's my vision for the store. So, I would like for our listeners to have some some input. So here here's the thing: if you have a, an idea for a product, let me know. Uh, send that to um, if Maz if Maz is on any of the merch, I'm on it. What is Maz? M A Z. Um. If I miss something, am I supposed to know something that I don't? It's Maz. But anyway, uh, let us know. Uh, send it to the same place that you would send for show topics and stuff. Let me get that on the, let me get that on. Oh, Maslow. Yes, yes. Sorry. I, I Whenever I affectionately speak to my dog in a, in outside of his name, I call him Mazbutt. Maz butt, you drive me nuts. That's what I say. Anyway, yeah, he's, what's up, buddy? Come here. What's up? Can you say hi to the folks? You don't understand what's going on, do you? Yeah, he's a good boy. So, yeah, yeah, we may put Maslow on, on a shirt or a hat or something like that or, or a coffee cup. All right, I'm done with you. Get down, Maz butt. All right, what am I doing now? Oh, yeah, let's look at the store, and then I want to get into this idea of spiritual warfare. Um, oh, wait a second. I, if, you, uh, if you have an idea for a product or anything like that, shoot it to me, ChristianityIsNow at gmail.com. And you can also do it for show topics and questions. And um, the cool thing about it is um, if you shoot us an idea for a product and, and we are able to incorporate that product into the store, um, I'll make sure that you get a discount on that product. Uh, I can make a discount code for a particular product. Um, anyway, let me, uh, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to hide that for now, but it's Christianity is now at gmail.com. All right, check this out. This cup is $15 and one cents. In fact, let me, let me get here where I can. All right. So this is a jumbo mug. It's 20 ounces. I have, yes, I have ordered one of these mugs. And incidentally, I want to mess with the design on these mugs. Um, 
I like that white with the with the patch, but I would I would like to have it all one solid color. Now here's the here's the rub with this cup. I did some research yesterday based on um, one of the listeners that emailed me about the price of the shipping. The person was like, "Man, this got to be a mistake. This is this is huge shipping." All right, the shipping on this mug is unreasonable at first glance. Because I was like very discouraged. I was like, well, man, if I got to charge the same price for the stupid shipping as I do for the mug, what's the purpose in even doing this? Folks, it's just really, really expensive to ship these mugs. Like if you just buy one mug, it's very, very expensive. Now, if you were buying, you know, five mugs, the shipping is expensive, but it's not, it's, it's, it scales down per cup. Okay, so you're going to spend fifteen dollars and one cents USD on this mug, and you and if you're shipping it in the United States, you're going to spend about fifteen dollars and fifty cents on shipping. So you're going to pay thirty dollars for this mug. <laughs> there just ain't no other way to do it. Um, it's just expensive. And incidentally, like uh, Stephen Crowder has this deal called Mug Club. And I'm thinking I know what he does. He has sourced his mugs from China or Taiwan or someplace like that. And they're really high quality etched mugs. And he probably buys them, like he probably buys them like 10,000 at a time. So he gets them down to like a dollar. The, 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 mug, the mug cost is like around a dollar. Well, you get a free mug when you sign up for Mug Club and you pay $99 for 12 months. I would love to sell a very, very high-quality etched mug with the Christianity Now logo on it, and I have found a place where I can purchase. Um, a, you got to you got to purchase a minimum of a thousand, and purchasing them a minimum of a thousand is like two dollars and something a piece. Well, I could sell those mugs for $10, but it'd still be $15 to ship them. Now, if I ordered above 10,000 of those mugs, I could sell those mugs for like $2, but it still costs $15 to ship them. So like, regardless of what we do, we're still just dealing with $15 to ship these mugs and there's nothing we can do about it. But, um... It is. It is pretty cool. Okay, Tony, is PayPal the only way to pay? Oh, that's a good question. Um, maybe. I need to look at that. See, everything, every every little every little layer you add to this costs money. So, whenever we set up the Stripe store, it was free to accept PayPal. Um, I may be able to set it up to accept other things, but of course, that may that may cost more money. So again, that, that's why we need support. Uh, we need support to do all this. I mean, we're getting support for the brand, but a lot of this stuff, I'm, 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 it's coming out of, out of the support, and then I'm kicking a little bit in, you know, out of my pocket. Not a whole lot because, you know, we're also up here in Canada and living and stuff like that. But um, hopefully, it'll take off and and we'll, it'll it'll turn lucrative just a little bit. But, um, but right now I think, I think PayPal may be the only way to pay. Um, so, and the way we do this, we've got Shopify hooked up to a print on demand outfit. And every time you make an order on Shopify, it populates the order in, uh, the print on demand and Shopify takes your money and then it sends it to the PayPal associated with the Shopify. And then that I take that and I, and I send it to the print on demand store and then, I'm able to keep the difference. And I will tell you this, at $15 and one cents, I'm virtually making $0 off this mug. It's just a way for us to get the brand out there. However, I wanted to showcase a couple of the products. Um, let me get back to the, the website. And again, I like the, I like, um, I like this mug here. This mug is a little bit more expensive because we don't have it we make up we make a little bit more profit off of it and it's Jesus loves me this I know and I just love this design um several years ago I w I started a project that 
quite frankly, it fell by the wayside because I had other things taking my time, but I paid to have this logo done and I really like it. So yeah, uh, you're, you're going to see this logo on some hats and t-shirts and stuff like that. But this mug is $20 and two cents, but it's still going to cost you the same 15, $16 to ship it. All right. Now let's get, let's just go to the catalog. Um, we have, well, you see the stuff in the catalog. Um, we got a faith over fear mug that I like. Uh, this, this mug is $8 and 58 cents. Um, faith over fear. I don't know. I just like it, but it's a smaller mug, but that's okay. I mean, it's, it's cheaper. And maybe we put the Christianity now logo on a mug like this. And of course here, here's another mug. Uh, it's 15 ounces. This, this mug, I can't remember. It's, it's, it's like eight ounces or so. It's a small mug, but here's what I want. I, I really like, I really like what our designer did with this shirt. It's a unisex heavy blend crew neck sweatshirt. Now it's 39 55. Um, and incidentally the shipping on this reasonable is it's, it's what you'd expect. Um, but check this out, dear person behind me, you are enough. I don't know. I just like that. Maybe I'm getting cheesy in my old age, but, um, I don't know about this one. Snitches get scriptures that may, uh, that may not, that may not, uh, translate well. I'm not sure, but. I, I like the idea and I like what the person is doing. Um, then, uh, where is the other one I saw? Hold on. We're going to, we're going to wrap this up and, and be done with it. Oh, I like the daughter of a King, the daughter of a King. It's uh 33 90. Again, shipping is about what you would expect. It comes in multiple colors. Oh, this one, 30, 33, 78. And again, check it out. Tomb, Jesus Christ, body not found. I don't know. It's just neat. I like it. So uh, we have a store. That's that's the point. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna stop sharing the screen, and we're gonna get to the podcast. I just hope that if that if any of you, um, if you're looking at these things, if you like what you see, maybe share, maybe purchase the product, share the products. Um, yeah, and just it's it's a way that you it's a way that you can help us get the word out about the brand and also um get value back immediately. All right. Let's get into this. Uh I'm gonna put the tip jar up because again, folks folks have asked. Uh the tip jar is near churches at gmail.com. Now, you can support us several different ways. You can do a $5 a month subscription on Substack. You can do PayPal at Near Churches. Um, how long did... Oh, Terry Crooks. I am so sorry. Hold on just a second. You are not, you are not blocked on Facebook. What has happened, um, you... Let me see. Um Hold on, so I'm gonna do this live. How to unblock on restream. I've had to do this before. Um all right, where Terry, I may have to do this whenever we get offline. Uh, because what what happened is I accidentally blocked you from everything. Um, and I think I need to go to settings right there. Uh, account, password, billing, payment, stream setup, email settings, branding. Okay, yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get you. You're going to be able to comment on YouTube. But on the cogitations uh, or, or, or the Facebook, you're not going to be able to. That's my fault. I forgot that whenever you were blocked that day, you were blocked on everything. That's, that's my bad. Um, <laughs> good grief. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Uh, but thank you for letting me know. And when, I, when we get off the stream today, I'll go in and I'll get you. I'll get you where you can, where you make comments and stuff. I, I appreciate your comments. And I know that YouTube limits you. 
And I know that you like to go to Facebook whenever you want to make a long comment. Uh, your comments are always germane, articulate, and, and logically arranged, and they add value to the stream. So I definitely want to get you get you to where you can comment. All right, folks. Oh, man. Just, just for, I, I, I'm, I don't know if I can get past this. Forgive me. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. All right. Um, for those of you that, don't, that aren't aware, uh, we had a troll come in the other day. And I'm, I look at a chat aggregate that has everywhere we're streaming all of the chat put into this chat aggregate. And um, so if a troll comes in, I can um, hover over the message and I can, it, it tells me what I can do and I can reply. I can block the user on YouTube. I can post, put to, put to the user in timeout or I can add to the block list on restream chat. And that's the thing. I don't know where that block list is. So, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say about that. Um, I'll have to find the block list. Folks, we are, and thank you, Terry. Uh, Terry says, okay, I'll wait. Thank you so much. Folks, we are in a spiritual warfare. Remember, when two armies come together, if one army is ambushing the other, the chances that the army that is ambushed is going to win is very is very slim. You have to be aware of the danger. That's why Paul says in Ephesians to walk circumspectly, redeeming the time because the days are evil. But I want to lay the foundation of this spiritual warfare. Listen to this. This is Hebrews chapter 2. But to which of the angels said he at any time, set on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Raise your hand if you're in the live stream and you are heirs of salvation. Folks, that's you and me. That's a Christian. Evidently, the angels are ministering spirits and they are sent to help Christians. And they're servants of Jesus. How does that look? How does that happen? How does that play out on a day-to-day? -day? It's not revealed. Okay? I have a mission to demystify the Bible. I think there's a lot of things in the Bible that, that people ascribe a mysticism to that should not be ascribed a mysticism. It's no mystery. It's, it's easily understood. But yet there are things that are mystic. We are dealing with the spiritual realm. I don't know how these angels come to aid us. I know that these angels, I, don't, I know that we don't have a personal guardian angel. I, I, I think about, the the trucker at the truck stops you have these little stickers and stuff and pendulum or pendants and whatnot and little catchy sayings and one of those sayings is don't fly any faster than your or don't drive any faster than your guardian angel can fly and i'm like eh just logically think about that for a moment if everybody had guardian angels that helped them out in circumstances what about all the times where somebody tragically died or or had an accident, was maimed. I don't guess their angel was paying attention, were they? Anyway, so that can't be what it means. Now, let's go to Matthew 25, all the way back to Matthew, and let's notice something. There's a, there's a verse of Scripture here that says a whole, whole lot in just a little bit. All right, so when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set up on the throne of his glory. And, of course, you know what's happened. He's, he's going to separate the sheep and the goats. And to the goats, he's going to say, go off into the place that is provided for Satan and his angels. Where is that verse? Then shall he say also unto them on the left. This is verse 41 of Matthew 25. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, depart from me, you curse, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, what I have here is I've got the devil, and he has angels, and I've got Christ, and he has angels. And then I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to read about, or excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm going to read about a spiritual warfare. Listen to it. Oh, hold on. Let me get, now I'm getting into where I need to, need to consult my show notes. All right. Ephesians chapter 6, listen to this. 
Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to be stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Folks, this high places translates a Greek word that means the ethereal region, the spiritual realm. It's used several times in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The word heavenly places and the word high places, the Greek word is the same. We're talking about the spiritual realm. There are spiritual battles going on evidently that you and I are a part of hello Robert ladies good to see you thank you thank you for joining in all right so we have to understand that we're fighting a spiritual war but we are not alone evidently the wiles of Satan buffet us we are buffeted by the wiles of Satan and his angels but yet we have angels in the spiritual realm that come and mitigate that. How? I don't know. It's not revealed in Scripture. I do know that the battle, though, is in the ethereal region, that those entities do not touch us. Somebody might ask, well, Tony, can, can Satan read our thoughts? I don't believe he can whatsoever. Uh, Satan is not omniscient. Satan is not omnipresent. Satan is not omni anything. Satan, it, Satan is not equidaic with God. Satan is a created being that evidently was created with free will, as evidently God creates. Uh, he created these angels, and these angels had free will, and, and one of them rebelled and took some with him. And we, that plays out in Scripture. But again, it's not, they don't have the power to touch this realm. But however they can affect this realm, we are in a battle. It's a battle in our minds. It's a battle of our minds. For instance, look at all of the things on the Internet that bombard us to take our eyes away from what, it, what they're supposed to be focused on and it breeds or foments concupiscence, greed, covetousness, idolatry even. We've got to be careful. I think it was Job that talked about making a covenant with his eyes. Why should he devile himself with a maiden? As men especially, we have to make that covenant with our eyes. And what Satan does through the influence that he and his angels have on the world, they create and influence things to pull our eyes away from uh, the focus on our creator and to focus on these evil things. Hello, Xavier Park. It's good to see you. So somebody might ask, well, exactly how does Satan and his angels try to get us? Let's say you're a recovering alcoholic. And if you know anybody who's a recovering alcoholic, you know how important um, routine is. They get up in the morning at 6 o'clock. By 6.30, they're, they're, they're showered and they have their boots on and they're drinking a cup of coffee. They drink coffee and, uh, and, and, and steal themselves for the day for 15 minutes. So that's 6.45. From 6.45 to 6.55, they talk with their wife, they get their lunch together, they warm the truck up, and then they go. They get in their truck by, six, by 7 o'clock, and they have a 20-minute drive to work so they can get there 10 minutes early, and they go into the factory, and they wind down from the ride or steal themselves for the day, for 10 minutes, and they punch in at 7 and start work. And they know the route. They take the same route all the time. And then all of a sudden, he notices that along the route, there's a 
there's ground broken on a retail establishment. And then a sign goes up. Superstore liquors coming soon. Now, this is a recovering alcoholic. Now, about halfway through construction, on the other side of the road, ground starts breaking. So this guy's driving and he sees this liquor store goes up. He sees the liquor store open and he, and he with any, he, any, he, and he's powerful enough in his will to withstand that temptation. But as is, as he's withstanding this temptation, he notices on the other side of the road, ground is broke. A building is starting to be built and the construction sign says coming soon. Happy trails bar. Folks, this is his route to work. Now, if he understands that he's in a spiritual warfare, he's going to figure out how to choose another route. He's going to figure out how to uh, not notice those things. He's going to figure out how to talk about it. He's going to figure out how to withstand that temptation. But if he doesn't know he's in a spiritual battle, if he doesn't know that this is Satan and his, and his minions in some way affecting the world, then he might just fall prey because the routine that he's made so much, well, he, he's going to have to, he's going to add things that are going to influence him. Like for instance, his buddies at work, Hey, the happy trails bar, it, it's grand opening is tonight. We're going to go by there and check it out after work. You ought to come with us. No, I, I can't do that. Now, if, if, he's, if he knows he's embroiled in a spiritual warfare, it's going to be a lot easier to say, no, nah, I can't do that. But if he doesn't understand that he's embroiled in a spiritual warfare, it's going to be a lot harder to survive that temptation, is it not? So, Jason Goldtrap. I'm, I'm confused. Finger red number one. Did you did you put an emoji in and that's what the chat's doing to me? That's weird. Finger red number one. I don't know what that means, brother. All right. Um, so I think maybe maybe there's a better way of conceptualizing it. But if you ask, well, how does Satan and his angels work in the world today to uh with that spiritual warfare, I think that's it. I, I think that Satan and his angels can affect the world like Jesus and his angels. It's in the realm of, of providence. They can they can affect things. And again, I don't know why. I, I know that Dan Winkler, uh, one of the great expositors of our age, regardless of what you think about him otherwise, He, he preached a sermon in which he described what I'm describing to you now about this spiritual warfare in the heavenly place, in the, in the ethereal region, rather, the high places. He said, if you could take a zipper and unzip and peer into that ethereal region, it would scare us to death because there is definitely a war going on. In fact, I'm going to put my marker on Ephesians 6 because we're going to come back to it and we're going to talk about this whole armor of God. But I want to I want to read. I'm going to start in verse. Well, I'll start in verse 12. And Satan absolutely uses the people of this world. Absolutely. And and here's the thing. He he again, it's not like and Wayne Vaughn, thank you for the comment. And it's not like he he goes boom and he he there's no there's no more demon possessions. Satan cannot directly operate but he can affect the people of this world satan can definitely use the people of this world to tempt christians that is absolutely correct all right but i want you i want to i want to share with you from second kings chapter six and one of his servants said well verse 11 no let's go to 10 and the king of israel sent to the place within the, which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. 
Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of you is the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Oh, you got that, Kim. Satan knows God's word as well. Well, and he said, go and spy where he is. So we need to go spy out where the man of God is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he's in Dothan. You ain't got to spy out where he is. He's in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city by night, or compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed city, both horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, unto Elisha, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. But look around, there's nobody with us. Are you crazy? Look at all these horses and chariots. Look at all these soldiers that surrounded us. How are we going to get out of this one? Look, you're seeing with eyes that can only see the physical. I'm seeing with eyes that can see the physical and the spiritual. And I'm telling you, they that be with us are greater than them. Let me say a little prayer for you. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of the Lord. He didn't even have to use all those chariots of fire. Folks, I read nothing in Scripture that would lead me to believe that if the Lord opened my eyes where I could see spiritually into that realm, I read nothing that says I would not see the same thing. So even though there, we are embroiled in a spiritual warfare, they that are with us is greater than they that be with them. And also this, well, verse 16, and he answered, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The them is the horses and chariots and soldiers physically. Who are the they that be with them? I think that would be the spiritual soldiers of Satan and his armies. Folks, it would scare us to death if we could actually see what was going on. 2 Timothy 2, 26, And they that may come to their senses and escape the same, the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Absolutely. If Satan is real, why do the Chinese government oppress Uyghur Muslims and Christians oppress Native Americans by taking their lands? Evil isn't binary. Different people have different agendas. No, evil's binary. You just don't understand the nature of it, and you're very ill-informed on everything you've just written. Um, first off, Chinese oppress the Uyghur Muslims because the Chinese people the, the by and large, the, the government of China is an evil regime. And of course, they're going to oppress Uyghur Muslims because the Uyghur Muslims, their value system stand in opposition to what the evil Chinese regime want to do. That's just doing Satan's work. Uh, Christians did not oppress Native Americans and Christians did not take the Native Americans lands and incidentally, if we were to give the land back, to whom would we give it? Because the Native Americans took it from somebody else. 
So how far back do you go and to whom do you give the land back? It is just the way of the world. People explore the world, and when they explore, they settle. There was no takeover of the land mass that we call the United States of America. It was found by European explorers. It was largely unoccupied. So we came over, and we enacted treaties. We traded. We did stuff like that. Uh, Columbus is not a genocide uh, Columbus was a brilliant individual. He was not a genocidal, ty uh, tyrannical person. When you look at South America with the Aztecs and such, yeah, who, who was the land first? Yeah. That's the thing. Um, so you have the, we'll just say the Comanche and the Apache. So there are two different tribes here. Well, the Comanche owned land and occupied land. The Apache wanted, so the Apache run the Comanche off. And then another tribe did that. This land bounced back and forth between different tribes. And besides which, the Native Americans were not this peace-loving, kumbaya, hippie kind of people that you think they were, that the left wing of the political bird of, the, of Western culture believes it was. They would rape and pillage and murder? I don't know. I mean, I rather like the way the world is today, and I rather like my creature comforts that Western culture and the white man has provided. Think about that. If you were to erase all of the inventions and uh, technological advancements and advancement in philosophy and theology and morality that come from white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Europeans, we'd be running around worshiping the fire god in a loincloth with no electricity. The world is a much better place because of white people and the things that the white people have contributed to our society. And I'm getting about tired of this narrative of um, vilifying the Europeans. Why do we got to insinuate ignorance? I've always come here peacefully and raise objections without insults. I was not insulting you. I said your position is uninformed. That's just a statement of fact. That's not an insult. Um. So yeah, that's I don't know I don't know what else to say. I mean, you ask you ask a question here. I just dealt with a question. You know, if Satan is real, why do the Chinese government oppress Uyghur Muslims? Well, Satan is real, and because Satan is real, the Chinese oppress the Uyghur Muslims. Christians do not oppress Native Americans, and Christians did not take any land. Well, black people have made a difference in so much as they have adopted Western culture. There have been great advancements in technology from people who are non-white, but those people were a, a, adoptive of, of Western culture. I, I mean, that's just, that's brutal, but that's just what it is. Um, George Washington Carver is a good one, you know. Um, anyway, the, the point is, Judeo-Christian values inserted into any culture is going to raise that culture, and that culture will transcend the status quo. That's the point. Um, but yeah, that's th this is just a non sequitur. Christians do not oppress Native Americans. They've never oppressed Native Americans, and Christians never stole any land. That's all there is to it. Um, so, hello, Scott Walls. Good to see you. Now, yeah, I feel a reparations. That, that's exactly um, the reparations comment. Yeah, no, 
do you know um well I I'm not going I'm not going to let the live stream be hijacked. Uh reparations is a fool's folly. No, there, there there's there's no group of people that owes another group of people anything. And reparations to require reparations as the term is defined in modern culture today to require reparations is sinful. It's sinful. It goes against God's justice. Um, so we are embroiled in a spiritual warfare, folks. Listen, we've got to put on the whole armor of God. Because if we don't wear the whole armor of God, we're going to fall to the spiritual warfare. Listen, think about the think about the armor, okay? First off, let's think, well, let's just go back to the book of Ephesians. Now, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against princi so principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Four things. All four of those things are supernatural. And, and that, that might lose a little bit in the, in the Greek or in the English, but you get it in the Greek. Reparations are immoral. They don't restore anything. They blame people for the sins of their father. Yeah, exactly. So the 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 narrative you put on put forth here was for that. Who would God be against it? Well, for the reason Xavier said, the reason God would be against it. Well, first off, now nah, we're not hijacking the live stream. Reparations are evil. Jesus is the living word, the same power that raised him from the dead is at work with us. It's that hope that animates Christ today. Yeah, why would God be against it? Read Xavier's comment. Because it's immoral. It doesn't restore anything. It just blames people for the sins of their father. I never owned slaves. None of my family ever owned slaves. Do you think that I should give money to Oprah Winfrey. In fact, a lot of these folks now, when they're taking this 23andMe, these DNA tests, they are finding out that they are the descendants of slave owners themselves. They find out that they are, they can trace their lineage back to people who were white who owned slaves. And they're black. I don't know. I, I just, it's a stupid conversation is what it is. Uh, reparations, regardless of what should have happened over 100 years ago, 200 years ago, close to it, there's no way to do it today. And incidentally, if you want to do, if you want to participate in reparations, you take your money and go give it to somebody. You first. That's, that's what I always say to people that say, reparations, now you're okay. Or we got to give the land back to Native Americans. You first. This is that spiritual warfare that we're in. The devil has his hand in this. Ben and Jerry's ice cream wanted to virtue signal. They put out a, they put out a tweet about stolen land. And when you do a little bit of research, Ben and Jerry's headquarters is on Native American land. And so people started tweeting them, you first, you give your land back. Most of us have DNA of both the oppressed and the oppressors. Well, that's the thing. You say that and somebody we were talking about this and somebody at somebody made the statement. They thought they were being intelligent because my deal was with, with the issues of slavery and, and stuff like that in the United States. My issue is get over it. Well, you can't tell people to get over it. I can't. What's the alternative to be resentful, to not get over it. If you do well, will it not be accepted of thee? And if you do not well, then sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him, the progeny of which then will be chaos and death. 
you can't dwell on these injustices of the past. Deal with what's in the present so you don't screw up your future. Yes, it sounds brutal. Get over it. But what's the alternative? To wallow in misery? To be a professional victim for the rest of your life and only live at the charity of other people? Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It, it's, and incidentally, the United States of America didn't start slavery. We ended it. Now, why did slavery end? Because of this book right here. Do good to all men, especially the household of faith. Folks, this spiritual warfare is real, and Satan is using this topic to wage war against Christians. Well, think about that. Some Indian tribes have rejected the government aid. They have developed their own reservations and have prospered. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Again, my, my deal is focus on the present. Don't be a professional victim. That way you won't screw up your future. And that's it. The devil is the source of all the hatred in the world. So quickly, we'll run through this and talk about I got so much more to say on this. It bothers me greatly that we have people that are so absolutely ignorant. They live in the, in the past. I found out my family had slaves. Should I feel bad about it? No. Have you ever had a slave? What's your net worth right now? Do you think you're benefiting because of your family having slaves? That's stupid. But if you feel bad about it, then take your own money and your own land and give it away. But see, that, that's what all these people do. They, they're like, oh, we should, we should help the poor. We should help the needy. We should help the oppressed. Well, who's oppressed? Well, nobody's really oppressed now, so we got to make it up. So we got to help the poor black people. We got to help the poor Indians. We got to, okay, how should we help them? By giving them your money. You see how that works? I dealt with this not too long ago. We had somebody who was kind of, I am disabled. Who cares? Your family owns slaves. You see, you see what I'm talking about? I mean, you shouldn't feel bad that your family owns slaves. You didn't own any slaves. Reparations, like any unearned money, always ends in disaster for the recipient. Look what happened to the lotto winners. Absolutely, it ruins their life. Africa still has and sells slaves. How about those against slavery go to Africa and straighten them out? Hey, hey, Alabama, that's, 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 that's it. That's it. Yeah. Look, I, I we're we're gonna put on the whole armor of God so you can withstand this mess. I I, I used to be a moderator on a group. I'm not going to tell you the name of the group, but it had like two and a half million people in the group. And my job was to go in and I would delete posts that shouldn't be in the group. And all of the, all of the, all of the things that I deleted were pictures and videos from Africa, the continent of Africa, many, 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 many of them from Cameroon, Sierra Leone, uh, there's places in West Africa. And it was pictures of the slave trade. It was pictures of tyrants going into villages and chopping up, and video, chopping up women and children with machetes and axes, I had to stop. It was, it was bothering me too much. So, yeah, if you think the United States of America is bad, if you, if you, if you think that we are irredeemable because we, for a period in our history, participated in the slave trade, which we should not have done, Chattel slavery is evil, and incidentally, the Bible outright condemns it. The Bible does not support chattel slavery. The Bible 
deals with indentured servitude, but it outright condemns chattel slavery. Yeah, go to Africa. Straighten them out. Evil is universal. Yes, it is. And incidentally, people with more melanin don't have the market cornered on oppression throughout history. Do an etymological study of the word slave. It comes from the Slavic people. It comes from the Slavic people. You know what color they were? They didn't have very much melanin. But so oppressed were the Slavic people that the term in English for slave, it comes from the word Slavic. You're a Slav, a Slavic person. You're a slave. I'm a pasty white person with West African in my DNA. Do you think anyone would give me a dime for that? No, absolutely not. Well, Elon Musk is South African. That's it, Danny Minter. I'm sure you've pointed out that tribes sold rival tribes to the whites that would sell them. Uh, it was black selling black. Yes, that's in, in Africa. That's Somebody pointed that out. Hey, hey, Alabama said, you know, go to Africa and fix that. Um, Paula Wussi says, well, I'm out of words. <laughs> um, if my great-grandparents stole the land of my friends and I'm super rich today, uh, wouldn't the Christian thing to do would be willingly choose to share some of that land? Well, you, you've, you've hit it right there. Willingly choose. But you wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to. That's it, the most successful man in the world. And incidentally, if the United States of America was so bad to people with high melanin content in their skin, and, and incidentally, this is happening in Canada too. Canada's promoting this stupid narrative. If Western culture, United States and Canada, is so bad and oppressive to people with high melanin in their skin, how come so many people from the continent of Africa with high melanin content in their skin come to the United States and Canada for a better life? Nobody has ever answered that. I was talking to a person from South America. The, well, South of the border of the United States. And they were talking about how much better it is back there in their home country. And my question was, well, why, why did you come here? Oh yeah. Then it came out. Yeah. That, that's why, because you were going to die because it was so dangerous. Get it. Yeah. Uh, and incidentally, the median income, I mean, you just, there, there's no upward mobility. You're, you know, trust me, United States of America and Canada as, as bad as they've gotten, are miles ahead, orders of magnitude better than these other nations in the world. That's why everybody comes. That's why everybody comes. That's why people, that's why legal immigrants spend literally tens of thousands of dollars to get here. So if my great-grandparents stole the land of my friends and I'm super rich today, want the Christian thing to do, be willingly to choose to share some of that, um, that, that would be willingly. Yeah, you could, you could share your land and your, and your resources, but it's willingly, not, not forced. Um, the U.S. would not take any, any friend from South America because he is de disabled. Yeah, because we, we want the best and the brightest. And uh, the it, it, it's possible that if your friend wanted to come, uh, immigrate over here, that being disabled, if they're not able to work, if they're not able to do anything, then they're going to be a drain on the system. And so you would, you, you're, you would be denied. Uh, not all blacks that live here, nor have ever been to Africa, it is therefore wrong to refer to all blacks as African-Americans. Or is it? Yeah, it's weird. That's a weird nomenclature. Yeah, because a lot of people with high melanin in their skin are Jamaican. 
they come from the Caribbeans. So they're, they're not even African. Um, no, it's not wrong, Angela. You know, in, with me getting permanent residence and citizenship in Canada, we have to prove that we're not going to be a drain on the system. We've spent close to $30,000 of our own money to be here in Canada. And part of that is proving that we're, that we're going to be an asset to Canada and not a drain on the system. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Kim Wade says, back to the whole armor of God. Yeah, we're, we're, we're out of time. Um, th this, this topic gets me riled up. And the problem is it's used by people who are just largely ignorant. They don't, they're delusional. They don't have a good understanding of reality. You can't be two things. You're either black or you're African. Africans that come here for an education at A&M will say that out loud. Well, let me tell you something. Yeah, the, um, the, the, the immigrants that come to the United States and Canada from, from Africa, they have a disdain for people who share their same level of melanin who talk about how bad the United States and Canada are. Heaven is way more profitable than a plot of land on this earth. You got that, Terry. And uh, this should have been a free-for-all Friday. Yeah, we may, we may, may re-up the whole armor of God tomorrow. Um, a Angela Noble, so am I drained because I'm disabled? Yes. I mean, that's, but you're a citizen of the United States. But yes, you, are, you, are you taking advantage of government welfare programs? If you are, then, then yes, you, you are taking advantage of the charity of the United States of America. You're a citizen here. You're born here. You have that right because of what your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have done. But yes, there are many, many people who, as, as far as the economy is concerned, are United States citizens, but they're a net negative. Think about people who actually don't pay in on taxes. The, the, the left talk about that all the time. Well, we got to pay your fair share of taxes. Really? You first. So if, 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 you're, if you're married and you have children and you make a certain amount of money, you get from the government unearned income tax credits. I know people who brag about it. They, yeah, we got $9,000 back on our taxes this year as a refund. You didn't pay near what you didn't pay near that in. Let me tell you something. For, for we've talked about the, the profitability of a godly spouse. Folks, ladies, when you're picking a mate, ask them how much they pay on taxes. Say, every year at tax time, do you get a check from the government or do you send a check to the government? If he says, well, I get a refund, then he's not the man for you because he can't support you because he's living off the government. People who work pay into the system then need it aren't the same as those who don't. Absolutely. And... um Kim Waits says, I'm a drain. I worked for years, though. Now I'm disabled. Well, then you're not a drain. You worked for years. You paid into the system. You participated in the American experiment. You paid into the system, and you're not a drain, because even though now you're disabled. See, that's the beautiful thing about Western culture. We take care of people who need taken care of. The problem is you can only go to the well so much before it runs dry, you've got to put stuff in the well. That's why the issue of immigration is so important. That's why whenever people seek to come to the country from other countries, they've got to prove that they're not just going to come and get on welfare. Now, that's totally different if you're, if you're born here. Uh, 
if you find yourself in a position where you got to be on welfare. Um, Angela Noble, I was born. I didn't get a chance to work. Yeah. No, I get it. I mean, that's, you, you ask a question, am I, I guess I'm a drain. I'm disabled. Um, I mean, I answered with a brutal honesty. That's it. Nothing is free. Somebody is paying for it. That is a lesson that we need sorely to learn in these United States of America, in Western culture. I keep saying United States of America. What I really mean is Canada and the United States. And Jason Goldtrap, with all the folks coming in from Mexico illegally, just go back to Mexico and use the lessons learned in America to improve Mexico. You know, that you would think it would be as easy as that, but the problem is the, the culture is not equal. Western culture, based on Judeo-Christian values, is the best. Everything else is subpar. That's just all there is to it. And even if you think, well, th well the United States of America is irredeemable, the pol and I, look, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the police. However, if I get pulled over by the police and they ask me a question, you know what I can say? I can say, I don't talk to cops. Try that in Nigeria. Try that in West Africa. Try that in South Africa. Try that in Port Elizabeth. Try that in Cameroon. Try that in Madagascar. You, trust me, if you get pulled over by the cops in China, and, you, and they ask you a question, you say, I don't talk to police. You might not ever be heard from again. The government has no money, not a dime. They have to take it from the taxpayer to give it to someone else. Now who's the slave? Ooh, shut your mouth. <laughs> What's the speed limit in Canada? It depends. Same, same as with the United States. Um, it's like you have, it's in kilometers though. Um, but typically you're about 70 miles per hour on the highways. You're about 50, 55 miles per hour on most two lane and four lane roads that aren't highways. And then of course, in the cities, you've got 30 miles an hour and below. Lord have mercy. So yeah, I, I, this, I don't mind so much leaving the topic at hand for this because it, it's important. And it is at least adjacent to the topic of the day, which is the whole armor of God. I mean, we've got we've to be able to logically consider these things. And it's, quite frankly, the height of foolishness to look out into the world and see evil and injustice and think that God doesn't exist because of it. God absolutely exists, and one of the reasons we know that he exists is because of the evil and suffering in the world, because here's the thing. Going back to the Uyghur Muslims in China, how do you know that's wrong? Is it wrong for Uyghur Muslims to be enslaved in China? If your answer is yes, you've got to tell me why. And to what standard of morality are you appealing? It's kind of like with the Nazis and the Nuremberg trials. Their defense was, we didn't break any laws. You can't try us. Well, okay. You did break laws, but not of your nation. You broke a higher law. And they appealed to the absolute morality of, of God Almighty in the Nuremberg trials. Now, let me, let me ask you this. Today, if the Nazi war criminals were on trial, would, be, would we be able to convict them? What law would we use to be able to convict them? They're, the Germans are not... The Germans are not subject to the laws of the United States, to the laws of Canada, to the laws of Europe, Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, 
any they're, they're not subject to any national laws. Germany was a sovereign nation. So how were they convicted and put to death, many of them? They had to appeal to a higher authority. I don't believe that if that happened today, the Nazis would be convicted in that court. Muslims want to kill Americans. I think Muslims, it's not Americans per se. It's just the, the Muslims want to rule the world. And that's the difference between Muslims and Christians. Christians don't want to rule the world. Christians want to make the world better. But we don't care if we make the world better. We want to go to heaven. A higher law that transcends the provincial and transient, I believe that's the way Chief Justice Robert Jackson said. Robert Leedy, if that's not exactly what he said, that's a real good stand-in. Yeah, the provincial and the transient, a higher law. And like I said, would, would, would we be able to do that today? The answer is, I don't know. Folks, I'm... I appreciate this live stream, I, even though we, we got off topic quite a bit. Um, I, I hope I hope it wasn't too off-putting. Um, but be, be careful. God's justice is always based on the individual. God's justice is not based on the demographic. Ezekiel eighteen is is Ezekiel eighteen is is pretty pretty straightforward there. The soul that sinneth it shall die. My father may have been one of the worst people in the world. My father may be Adolf Hitler. I I don't have to suffer for the sins of my father in God's eyes. Now the world may crucify me, but you know the world's the world. That's it. Try again tomorrow. I believe we will try again tomorrow. I may take the first segment and 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 just talk about the armor of God. But folks, thank you so much. Listen, I would uh, turn your attention and and Angela Noble. I do not want you to feel bad. I do not want you to feel uncomfortable. You are not a drain as a person. Whenever we talked about, whenever you asked whether or not you was a drain, we were talking about pure mathematics. I know that you, and I'm going to speak about me, I know that I am worth more than my mathematic value. I am worth more to the world than what I add to the economy. You. Angela Noble, are worth way more to the world than what you add to the economy mathematically. I hope I hope I have explained that in a clear way. In fact, e each individual listening to this is worth more than what they add to the economy mathematically. Taking you out of the world, the world would not be as good of a place. And that's all we got. Folks, thank you so much. Listen, uh, like, subscribe, and share if you would. Um, Jordan Catch TV, bruh. Well, bruh to you. Um, you're welcome, Angela Noble. I just wanted to make sure that we cleared that up before we got off the air. Um, <laughs> this was kind of trash. It's okay. Um, you don't have to listen. I feel compassion for all those who lost their lives in wars, but I recognize the limitations. I cannot change the past. Instead, grant me the armor of God so that I may stand strong in the present and future battles. That, Terry Crooks, that's it. That's it. So, yeah, I appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, to Jordan Katz TV, this was kind of trash. Thank you for that. Um, appreciate you. And I appreciate the comment. And you're commenting and interacting with the live stream. 
helps us get to people who would not think this is trash. Because it doesn't matter how good you are, it doesn't matter how bad you are, there are going to be people that absolutely love your show and be people that absolutely hate your show, and yeah, maybe the show's not for you. Uh, but we appreciate you. Listen, we're going to end it up, put on the whole armor of God, come back tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit about the armor of God, then we'll have a regular free-for-all Friday. Uh, this has been Tony Brew with Cogitations. Uh, you can support us uh, near churches at gmo.com is the uh, PayPal. You can also do a $5 subscription at Substack, and you can, I don't know, just look at the show notes and uh, help us out. And don't forget, uh, check out our, our merch store. Um, the, um, let, me put, let me put a link in the comment section to one of our products. And that will get you into the merch store and you'll be able to mess around with it. God bless every one of you. Thank you so much. Again, Cogitations on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Radio. Thank you, Kim Wade. And we'll catch you all.